My name is John, and I'm a grateful, recovering conceptual artist. Thank you, my people are here. Uh, I promise this is not a 12-step meeting, but it might turn into one. So as a conceptual artist, uh, we're misunderstood. In fact, we've, we're so misunderstood that we've changed the name of what we do to social practice, which kind of sounds like work. Um, but the work I do is social practice, but I'm definitely a conceptual artist. When you think of contemporary art and you think of conceptual art, one of the things that people experience is they're like, I don't get it. A urinal at MoMA, 1917, what is that? Well, what it is, is it asks a question. It asks a very important question of what art is, who, is, who, who says what art is, and who may or may not agree with them. So one strategy that I use for my conceptual pieces that are mostly interactive is I name them in such a way that you know exactly what they are. So my first major project out of graduate school that was made into a book, that was almost made into a movie, <laughs> uh, is called All My Life for Sale. And I sold everything I owned on the internet auction site eBay and traveled around the country visiting the people that bought my crap. So, all my life for sale, you get it. I'm currently working on a project in partnership with Lamplighter Roasting Company uh, and the Ransom Recovery Group at VCU, and it's called Five Cent Coffee. What do you think that's about? Of course, uh, Noel at, at, uh, at Lamplighter is not happy that I'm selling Lamplighter coffee for five cents. Have you ever gone there? Because it's a lot more expensive than that. <laughs> And it's awesome, so yeah. But I'm not selling the coffee, I'm selling the conversation. And I'm not really selling it, I'm, you know, just give me five cents, come on. My current, I have a project that's coming up that's going to be in the garden of the ICA on Thursday, and it's called Free Hot Supper. So again, I title things, they are what they are, you get what they are. Now whether or not, that they, whether or not you consider them to be art, that's, you know, that's a question, and it's a question I'm interested in. I just returned from a residency at the Fanoon Center in Doha, Qatar, and I had the great fortune of having Jeff Koons visit the studio that I was working in. And one of the things that he talked about is that, it's, that, that contemporary art is not just about raising questions, although it is that, it's also about a conversation. And to get back to the, the, the Mar Marcel Duchamp and Fountain, his friends hosted an exhibition that said that they would accept anything that was considered art. That's why he, that's why he brought the urinal, because he wanted to test their metal. And you know what they did? They rejected it. So that's why it's important, because it raises the question, and it starts a conversation. And it's not that things that I do are art because I say they are. Things that I do are art because I say they are, you participate, and some of you agree with me. But the reason I'm here today is not to talk about art history, although I teach at the university, so I do this in front of my students all the time. The reason I'm here today is to talk about how free ice water saved my life. Free ice water is a project that's about conversation. It's about face-to-face, distraction-free conversation between two people. It's really easy to do. There are seven steps. See, I, I told you it was gonna be a meeting, but not 12, there's just seven steps to enlightenment or whatever it is. The first step is easy, and Andy's already done it for us, okay? Find someone to have a conversation with. So you stood up, you're standing next to somebody, you've just introduced yourselves. Make a point of following up with them and having a conversation with them. The second step is reserve a block of time. Now everything is really fast here at, and, and very timed and coordinated at RVA, uh, TEDx RVA. So what I would normally tell people who are participating is take 45 minutes to an hour to sit down and have a conversation. We've truncated that to 20 minutes, so don't worry, but you still need 20 minutes. You gotta have 20 minutes to sit down and talk to somebody. And it has to be distraction free. So let me ask you this, you guys all brought your phones, of course, right? and you all turned them on vibrate, right? 
but I want you to turn them off. Ooh, really turn them off. Not just vibrate, hold them, hold them up. Come on, turn them off, everyone in here. I want you to be here with me and not mistakenly get a text message from somebody about something that happened. I was at Andy's party last night and I got three text messages from my daughter saying, are you going to read to us? <laughs> so I left and read to them, of course. So be present and be with us and the speakers here. Don't let the other things that are happening in the world interrupt the important conversations that we're having. Step three is to get some ice water. And boy, do I need some. So I have these beautiful blue jars, and they're upstairs. And you used to be able to get them at Target, but now I don't, I don't know what you can do. And I want you to fill it, I want you to fill it with ice and water. I'm going to take a sip, because this is too tempting. Um, you, you fill it with ice and water. You set it on the table between the two people who you're talking, you know, the two people who are talking and you have a conversation. And the question is, what do you have a conversation about? So in my case, uh, when I talk to people, I tell them about May 21st, 2013, which is a very significant date for me because it's my sobriety day. So what I'm interested in when I'm talking to people is, is there a point in your life, a point in your life where you have changed direction and it could be small, it could be somebody that you met, uh, it could have been a book you read, it could have been a trip you took, it could have been any of these different markers that are the forks in our proverbial rivers. People have a conversation, they have 45 minutes, there are lulls, they get bored with each other, they think of new things to say, it becomes interesting again. And at the end of the conversation, what I have them do is share the water. And it's tap water, not bottled water. Of course, some people use bottled water because they're scared of tap water, but I love tap water. <laughs> you share the water, and usually I share first because people are a little uncomfortable sharing a water glass, but it's whatever. Uh, and then you take a token of that conversation and you put it in the jar. Now, at different exhibitions, I've manufactured tokens, but the, the, the one I like to use the most is the Sacagawea dollar. And what happens is people take the dollar, they put it in the jar, they fill it back up with water, they sign and seal the lid, and they have completed the work. And the question that exists is, what is this object afterwards? And it's really a question that you guys will have to answer for yourselves. But in my case, it is an object that's been transformed by the people who have had that conversation. It contains that conversation, and it could be significant, and it's important. Thank you so much.